Good, please. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that uh, we can all come together and uh, make decisions about our town. Just be with each and every one of us as we discuss city matters, and uh, that at the end you will be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, number, uh, item number two on the agenda. Do we have any public comment, community announcements, recognitions? None. Item number three, consent agenda. Uh, agenda item number A, uh, I will entertain a motion and a second to approve uh, consent agenda item A. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? No? Well, let's uh, submit your vote, please. All votes are in. See the vote. Unanimous for the individuals that are in attendance today. Item number four, uh, discussion of possible action authorizing uh, staff to adopt the Oklahoma Municipal Retirement Fund Ordinance, reflecting changes in the Guthrie uh, City Manager option uh, and a plan in the joiner agreement. You have uh, staff comments on that? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this change reflects going uh, going to a daily valuation basis. Uh, this has been vetted by the IRS, and it's uh, a requirement that the staff, that the city authorize the staff to adopt this uh, this new agreement, new plan. Uh, this was first instituted and adopted when Matt Mueller was coming on some years back. So this is something that uh, we've already done. This is just making that change. Uh, to this agreement. Okay. And that, that is only the city manager, right? That's correct. Only the city, this is a city manager option. And if you have any questions, Jim is here. And it, uh, this is something that's required by the IRS. It's mandated by the IRS. The plan was modified to, uh, as Larry said, to reflect or have the ability to do daily valuations for the participants, and, and Matt is still a participant, so the city still maintains that plan and will maintain that city manager plan. So in order to do that, we first, uh, about three months ago, the previous council approved the trust indenture, and now you're approving the uh, joiner agreement and the actual plan that had been then approved by the IRS. So did that make sense? <laughs> Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'll entertain a, a motion to uh, a move to uh, so moved. Second. Any other discussion or questions of Jim? Okay, submit your vote. All votes are in. And it's a unanimous <coughs> for all those individuals in attendance. That adjourns our Guthrie Public Works Authority meeting. And I will call to order our uh, city council meeting. And uh, before we get into any of the agenda items, I'd like to welcome to our, uh, our council chambers, our interim city manager, Larry Pinnell, uh, sitting to my right, uh, who has been with us for uh, a number of weeks, a week, days, days, today. Today's Days my a day week. And my week anniversary, anniversary, an anniversary date we're celebrating. Yeah. Uh, but uh, welcome, welcome to Guthrie, welcome to our chambers, uh, and um, thank you for what you've already done in a week. So, thank you, it's an honor to be here. Okay, consent agenda, item number two, consent agendas, uh, items A through H. You want to play H? I will entertain a motion to uh, approve all items A H? through H and a second. So moved. Second. second. Further discussion? I'm not, I was just thinking, Brian asked me about item H. I don't know if he wanted to pull it or not. So let's talk about it separately. Brian, did you want to do that or not? No, that's OK. OK. Thanks. Let's make sure okay. it didn't pass you. <laughs> the 
this it. thing is not going. All right. No further discussion. Submit your vote, please. All votes are in. All right. Can we see them? Uh, it's a unanimous vote to uh, approve that motion uh, by all individuals in attendance. Item number three, discussion and possible action of lease agreement between the city of Guthrie and Dream Portals production for Toloa Music and Arts Festival. Is there a staff uh, comments, staff reports? Cody, would Cody? you help us Cody, out on this, yeah, please? please no. And we'll, I'll pick up. Uh, thank you very much for uh, seeing this item, uh, the Toloa Music and Arts Festival uh, pro put on by Dream Portal Productions. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Nathan Trotter with uh, Toloa and Dream Portal could not make it tonight due to a family emergency. Uh, this is a um, festival looking to come to downtown Guthrie, utilizing some um, camping space inside of Mineral Wells as well. Um, I think the, the, the plan is for the cap uh, of ticket sales to be about 5,000. Uh, of course, press releases and uh, ticket sales have already gone underway, but um, we, we do not know where uh, current ticket sale numbers are right now or are projected for moving forward. So any questions you have, I'd, I'll try my best to answer. Questions? I have no questions on the uh, the uh, festival itself. I do have some uh, concerns uh, about the contract that uh, we have been presented. Um, actually, the, it has been changed a little bit from the one two weeks ago, and it is, is what I can see has been changed for the better, for the benefit of Guthrie and to protect Guthrie. I do have other things, or, and some of it is not that major, it's just some semantics of the way things are worded. Um, I do have some concerns of the Mineral Wells Park being used as a campground and using it as for heavy vehicular traffic. It may not be that that's a major concern is that we do have car shows that do work down there. I'm just thinking for both safety and how we would keep uh, heavier equipment out of the park area so it doesn't destroy the roots of the trees if you drive over those trees as now with all the rain and soft as is it can cause damage and hurt the trees um, as far as other things uh, I have a list of bullet points here that not necessarily have to be gone over individually I think for a good faith um, effort on Toloa that they would put up a $2,500 uh, deposit, non-refundable deposit for the show that gets them in the game so that uh, uh, it shows that they're good faith that things will be taken care of and that uh, the facilities will be uh, restored once the festival is over. Um, that's really my two uh, uh, major uh, concerns, uh, other things that I've talked it over with uh, city attorney and uh, with you, uh, Cody, that uh, we've discussed so that it should be okay to go ahead and move forward with this um, with the few modifications to the uh, contract. Obviously, uh, Mr. Uh, Trotter not being here, what we do tonight, I'm sure you will be able to discuss with him what we what we go over and what we how we change the uh, contract when he sees it. So, I agree yeah, I have yeah. I have some concerns also, and it has to do with with some of the street closures that are being proposed. Um, when we talk about closure of Cleveland and uh, First Street, uh, Oklahoma to Noble, it, it appears to me that that landlocks a number of of businesses, including uh, uh, civic organization, American Legion, uh, restaurants, shops, antique mall, um, landlocks them on all sides. Uh, and I think that's a, a challenge if we are looking at a, uh, a Friday, especially a Friday, Saturday uh, encumbrance of, of, that, of that access. Correct. And uh, just to let you know, Mayor, uh, city staff has gone ahead and uh, tried to talk to some of those businesses. We talked to Katie's Diner specifically about um, 
opportunity to, um, if, if this were to happen, uh, that they might be a little bit displaced in their, or their customers might be a little bit displaced in parking and those kinds of things. And we anticipate Trotter, uh, or sorry, Toloa uh, reaching out to those businesses to try and figure out some kind of an amenable situation. One, one thing that I did not point out earlier was that you'll see in your packet a letter uh, of support uh, from your CVB board as well, signed by your CVB chair, Debbie Prather, who's in attendance tonight. Would we be able to do well, wait, uh, So we're going to figure out uh, an access dilemma after the fact? The, the contract is... Uh, the, the street closure is what Taloa has requested. I went over to Katie's and asked if they had been a, approached because I knew that I know that they have a community outreach uh, portion of their um, organization in, in Dream Portal. Uh, I asked if they had been uh, con contacted by that. At that point, um, 10 days ago, they had not. But, uh, but that's it, just one of how many businesses are going to, how much access, how many businesses do we lose access to? Roughly eight. Total in the in every closure that they do, it's only eight. Mm -hmm. Because there's ingress and egress for uh, other other avenues, pretty much outside of the uh, first in Cleveland stage location. So it won't be as bad as Mumford and Sons, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. No. Okay. And um, the the Chamber of Commerce, a few maybe maybe eight months ago, maybe nine months ago, talk, uh, had someone from the Oklahoma Travel uh, Association come in and talk about uh, whenever your business is displaced by special events. They were, they were targeting specifically about uh, movies, movies being shot and you know, businesses having to be closed for days upon a time, what the powers of your uh, business are that you can ask for. And so I think that we're gonna take kind of that same mentality to making sure that our businesses understand that they have you know, some uh, some authority to make make certain requests to make sure that their needs are met. That was that was a discussion that we specifically had again with Katie's Diner. Yeah, I think there's a couple other businesses along that along on the, Cleveland on the uh, south side that are Cleveland. impacted there also. Mm -hmm. I think obviously we have a balance here of trying to create an environment that is positive for mm -hmm. inviting businesses, in this case festivals, to come. Uh, we also need to protect our businesses that are here, absolutely, uh, and and also make it convenient for customers to use those those mm -hmm. businesses, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's a challenge. And I am uh, concerned also that if if we go ahead with this, uh, finding a solution after the fact is a little bit more difficult than trying to come up with it at the beginning for a plan. And we have we have told uh, Taloa and Dream Portal to make sure that they are contacting these businesses. I know that they have been out. Uh, specifically, I know that they've been to the um, shops on East Oklahoma. Um, but we have made it very clear that our expectations are that you reach out to these businesses to talk about um, what they can expect for, for the week that you're here. And, and have there been any discussions concerning part the parking situation? I know uh, yeah, a uh, number of people have expressed some concern, especially on Friday with the competing football game. Mm -hmm. You're right. Uh, and uh, one of their venues. Whenever the first press release came out uh, and uh, we saw some um, concern from other uh, stakeholders in the tourism industry in Guthrie, uh, we uh, immediately looked to kind of have a secondary plan for downtown. We told them at that point, you will be responsible for finding an alternative for parking. We can talk to you about downtown uh, staging and everything like that, but parking you're probably going to have to do on, on your own privately, leasing land, finding transportation for uh, your uh, ticket holders, those kind of things. We made that very clear whenever we had to kind of scramble for the um, plan B. And, and my last question, so far anyway, um, the um, Dream Productions Taloa mm -hmm. uh, is uh, is given access to hire uh, or contract with food vendors mm -hmm. in this contract. Um, I didn't see anything that those food vendors need to need to comply with City of Guthrie requirements and regulations. Uh, for for any mobile merchant uh, coming in, and you saw this with Queen, with Queen of the Prairie, for any mobile merchant due to a uh, ordinance that was passed in uh, fall of 2014, any mobile merchant that is coming in is required to pay a permit for um, that. And, 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 that, and that is largely to protect our brick and mortars. Okay. 
So even though that's not specified in the in the contract, it's itself, already covered through city. It's already policy. covered. Okay. All right. And we, and the city, I'm sorry, collects that, not the festival. Yes, that's a permit fee uh, taken outside, in the community development outside offices. Outside of this this uh, contract <laughs> that we're looking at. Okay. And just to add on top of the mayor's uh, concerns, I'm concerned with our infrastructure, our historic parks, and things like that. That's why I'm. <coughs> trying to keep that as protected as possible too. So uh, along with our businesses um, and our bricks and mortar and our historic buildings in downtown to keep them safe uh, along with our parks, and we wouldn't have to. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions at this point? So the, the motion before us, or the, the item on the agenda, is to, uh, is to take action on this lease agreement. Yeah, what is the, I've got another question, a couple of them actually. Uh, so what is the typical liability insurance that should be for, for most special events that we uh, bring into town, we require a million dollars in liability insurance. Okay. Um, for every occurrence? Yes. Okay, well that's not how this one reads. For, um, for your festivals and those kinds of things that come in, and that's, that's kind of typical, um, that would be the standard, I think, from what I understand for even private, private venues as well. Uh, what you have is a million dollar coverage, a hundred thousand for personal injury, single occurrence, and twenty five thousand for property damage, single occurrence. Mm -hmm. That's a far cry from a million. That's not a million per occurrence. So that's the one question. Mm -hmm. um, the second one, and show me in this agreement where the city. It looked to me like the festival kept all the money inclusive of anything that had to do with vendor trucks, vendors, all of it. Meaning we don't get a percentage of sales? No, meaning that we don't get a permit fee. No, uh, again, that's covered under another policy that was already yeah. implemented. We'll get get that, that, that was a policy that I mentioned. Maybe that was the part, and that's where I was getting back to it. Maybe it was the part that I need to clarify that was at Mineral Wells. Maybe they don't get a per maybe we don't get the permit fee when the vendors are at mineral wells on the deal. The the permit fee is for the entire city. We've had yeah, uh, exactly. we've had food trucks that have come in and have, that have never used uh, public infrastructure, but private infrastructure, private parking lots, those kinds of things that have paid a permit fee as well. And so it's kind of uh, it is all encompassing for the entire city of Guthrie. It's a yearly fee. And it's a yearly fee of seventy five dollars. No, uh, I was talking about, are they going to allow, um, well, and furthermore, uh, because we have something else on the agenda that we need to determine as well, uh, are we, are they asking to forego our uh, ordinance of, of drinking within Mineral Wells Park? Because that's not in here. The, the alcohol has been uh, limited to the uh, downtown area. That was something that we had, we had expressed. They had never made a request to have uh, any alcohol allowed in the camping area. Okay. Okay. And w out of curiosity, why aren't we getting um, part of the gate, so to speak? I'll tell you, we, we've continued operations under uh, the last uh, kind of guidance that we've received and uh, we, you know, the 62nd City Council, you know, through the Rate and Fee Advisory Committee had said that they didn't want to focus on um, the, the um, charging of any festivals or anything like that. We wanted to be welcoming of festivals and, uh, you know, us opening up the Cottonwood Flats, those kinds of things are pro-tourism. Whereas, you know, asking for a gate fee is um, maybe a typical standard for private, private uh, venues and those kinds of things, but um, not even a 
complete operating policy for most of them. I think that you see some, you know, five dollars at the door with the with the host getting a cut of, you know, a dollar or something like that. But even that's not um, a one hundred percent rule. <laughs> even that's not a one hundred percent rule for all private venues. So the the CVB, which fully endorses this, mm -hmm. I, I understood you to say. Um, you're comfortable that uh, that most cities, mm -hmm. most most governmental uh, arenas that would host this would uh, would not be charging a, uh, a a fee or a part of the take. Uh, you know, I, I really the, can't say for what other other cities have done in the past. The city of Guthrie has not uh, charged a gate fee or um, a fee to have a festival in. Um, on publicly owned land. Okay. I don't believe we get a part of the gate fees for bluegrass. I don't think we do either. So I'm not sure that we should extend it just because of this. We need to be more consistent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and to that point, she's absolutely right. right. And uh, maybe that needs to be revisited uh, as far as the bluegrass contract as well. Um, I mean, again, I, I think that we're all for festivals and the whole nine yards, uh, but where do, we, where do we make the money, okay? I know we make the money on tax. We're going to have to draw a line somewhere, though. We we're going to have to draw a line we, somewhere, but, I agree. And the reason why I'm saying it is I, I don't want us to start in on, on going along saying we're going to say, Cody, you need to go out and tell them we want to negotiate a contract where we have to start getting a gate fee. We'll drive several of these other, you know, group, bluegrass will leave us, you know, and I don't want that because that, that's turned out to be one of the biggest things we've had around here. I think a lot of people like it, and I've gone to it several times, so I don't want to start that or we'll, we'll lose something like that. And that's what I'm afraid of. Mumford & Sons was a one-time event. It'd be great to have one of those every year where it brings in, I don't know how many, you know, thousands of dollars to, you know, some 300 and some thousand dollars. It, you know, it'd be great, but I don't think that's going to happen every year. No, but I think that one thing we need, do need to do with it, we are a festival destination that we do need to relook at the permitting process of these festivals because we are, as we have talked over and over, we're money strapped. We only get money from sales tax and fees, water fees. This is, we don't need to go out and become or ask the moon from the festivals coming to town, but I think that we really do need to think about looking at making something from the festivals that come through other than a sales tax, because that is too, you can't guarantee anything from that. Well, I'd like to um, see a precedent of other cities approximately our size or a little larger and see yeah. what they do. Do they get gate fees or? Well, I'm not just saying gate fees, possibly permitting fees or some other way of making some revenue for the city to help the city with its budgetary problems that we have right now. Uh, there's a lot of other th ways that I think we can do it. I'm not just saying gate fees may, and that is a, again, it comes down to a contractual thing. It doesn't have to be with everybody. It's, it's what we contract with that particular festival at the time, I feel. Um, some festivals we may not. There may be some people that we do, depending on the size or the type. Um, it, it should be a negotiated thing per festival. And if we do a multi-year thing, well, then we can sign a multi-year agreement at that time once we get to that. So it, 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 it could be that we need to take this up. In, in workshop for future, that's a good idea. For, for to set uh, future future guidelines and guidance, uh, or ask the uh, the CVB uh, committee to uh, assist in establishing those uh, those guidelines uh, for us for the future. I think the challenge is we have this we have this uh, action item in front of us. Um, what action does the council yeah. desi desire to take? I would like to make a motion to show good faith from Toloa by having them put up $2,500 as a non-refundable down payment for their 
festival and implementing the bullet points that we have talked about tonight uh, that we have already printed out and then go from there with their negotiation. Well, I, that would be the end of the, 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 the motion at that point. Then you can negotiate what we put in later on once he sees this. I'll second that. Before you Was that clear? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I kind well, of got are, drifted off. Are you just saying basically what you're telling the staff to do is to negotiate the contract? And you're and saying you want all of these bullet points incorporated into I would say we'll, right. well, I would like to, uh, yes, yes, bottom then, line, yes. No. We didn't I, discuss all of these items. No, we didn't, and that was the problem. I think that we, that's why I said we would negotiate some of these. I didn't say, some of these are semantics. Some of these we just discussed, actually, with uh, a gate fee. That is one of the bullet points here. That would not be in uh, the motion, so. Is that the 10%? Yes. Yeah. So do, do we, so what? What we want to do then is let Cody go ahead and negotiate this. Is that we want well, to do? Well, I, I think authorize Cody to negotiate the contract and bring it back to the count with these bullet points in it. Yes, yes. And then bring the bring the contract back for the council to. Okay. Cody, do you need a contract approved soonly? Is that? Uh, that I'm trying to read your face. Well, that, the other motion could be uh, <laughs> ap approve this agreement with these bullet points in it, and then all they've got to do is sign it if they agree to it. Right. So. Well, and the dilemma I see that I think from looking at your eyes as well is that, A, this is already being marketed. B, tickets are already being sold, and there's no contract in place. Okay? And I think if there's other questions here, uh, since the CBB is involved in it, we do have Debbie here that might be able to answer some of them as well. Hate to throw you in the frying pan, but, uh, you know, I mean, to sit here and, and to totally renegotiate this contract. And that's not really what's happening here. It's just adding some changes to making things more clear. Um, I feel that that's uh, an acceptable way to go. And one of the things we want to make certain that we recognize is that we have, we're down the road seven months on this. They're making plans. We've been making plans. And if there are going to be some changes, there need to be minor changes. Mm -hmm. And there need to be changes that do not scare this festival away, yeah. nor any others. I agree. Right. And I would agree to that. That is very true. If we're not trying to run them off. We want the festivals. Cody? I'm sorry, <laughs> Cody. I, I I do uh, I do think that um, Mr. Pinnell had a great point. Is that uh, you know uh, minor minor changes to where I think that uh, after the uh, no action that was taken uh, during last during the last city council, um, I think that that kind of you know show gave some concern to Taloa. Um, I I am fearful of what a um, I, I would consider these uh, drastic changes as far as gate fee and those kinds of things after we hadn't really, I mean, we've never spoken to them about that. Um, I, I do fear that uh, we would go completely from the opposite end of welcoming them to almost saying uh, not welcome. I, I, I am fearful of that. Well, I don't think that's the case. I think that they are welcome, but by the same token, Okay, marketing and ticket sales have happened without a contract. It's just simple as that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that the uh, quick uh, fix for them uh, would be to go get a contract from a private entity the next day. If, if, they, if they don't have a contract tonight, I think that the quick fix for them would be to go and get another contract from a private arena the next tomorrow morning. And... Do you, do you think and completely end any negotiations for us right now do you think cody when you eliminate the gate fee these other things are not most of them are really not very significant uh, i mean are there any particular bullet points on this besides that yeah, that that's what I want you think are deal killers uh, no the the wording as far as um you know keeping heavy trucks out of mineral wells um that's that was for camping that was what that was requested for again we talked about uh parking i think that you're going to see more of your loading uh inside of downtown more than anything i don't think that you're going to see heavy production trucks um 
in in the park necessarily. What a, we have a motion and a second. Right now we have a motion and a second that has not been amended. Um, so we need to amend that. Then. Amend is that, well, we want to drop on item three, rent and recoverable costs. If there is a, uh, on the first end of the festival, shall we made a 10% of ticket sales and camping uh, fees, we can strike. I think it needs to be that. amended to, to approve the contract with these things, not just to continue to negotiate it. That's the issue. That's well. Okay. We need this. We need to stop negotiating and say this is where it's going to be, and that's where your motion needs to go. The amendment needs to say we want this contract with these amendments, not so this, this not. We need to continue negotiating. Well, that's the part that needs to be okay. changed. That makes it more clear. Yes. Okay. Can we have that as the motion? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well. Yeah. 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 Can we? Can you have to withdraw who would like your to, motion? Who would like you? Oh, would, would like to amend. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Would you like to amend your initial motion yes, to reflect I will, what, I, uh, what I said? I will amend my initial motion to what uh, Mr. Thomas said. <laughs> and, I'll, and, I'll, and then I'll second you that. Second. Yeah. Okay. Is, Just him get it. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? You got it. Now. I have. A, I have. I have. Well, yeah, I've got still, some discussion here because we haven't been through the bullets to know that if it's realistic to put it in the contract or not. So what are we going to do? Just give Cody this and say, here, go get this added to the contract? That's what the motion was. Yes. yes. That's yes. what the motion was. And I believe that these have been vetted by our city attorney as well. Is that correct, Randall? Uh, I've gone through them. We had some discussion. Mr. Councilman Wood and I had some discussion, and uh, many I agreed with. There were a couple that, that I questioned one, that whether they were necessary. That. And that was, if about they're not necessary, I that would that'll be just a well, and this one's the one you and I talked about yes. as far as uh, if, if for some unknown reason one of these, uh, the area that they want to put on the festival, storm related or whatever is not available, can't be used, there's a couple of sentences that says we will help them find another space. It really doesn't put an obligation on us, other than, and I think we would do that anyway. Right, I think right. we would do so, that regardless of the venue. Yeah. So that's item see, six, and that item yeah. six we I can, didn't feel it would be really nice necessary. To, and that's fine, we can, that can be struck. Now. That's not a... <laughs> but the item seven is a cost to the festival, yeah. that is to provide uh, event insurance. Yes. So I, and I don't know whether y'all discussed that one or not. We can That's not an issue? No. Plan to do what, event insurance? The, in, in our discussion phase, the thing that concerns me is that there is not a parking plan in advance of our approval. There is not a plan to help those businesses that are uh, negatively impacted by being landlocked by the streets that are proposed to be closed. Uh, and, and I'm really concerned that th if those things don't happen after this approval, obviously our leverage is not there because we've already approved it. And I'm not pleased that that wasn't a part of this process. Um, and I would like to protect I would like to protect the people that are coming downtown, not only for the festival, but also to, to carry on regular, uh, regular business, where, the, where do they park, uh, and as well as those businesses that are not going to have access other than walking access to their entry point to their businesses. I would um, like to make one point, and I'm not trying to be negative, but we did not have that type of an agreement with Mumford & Son. And I personally feel like that if we're going to make those requests, it should be done for future events. And we need to maybe either have a subcommittee to come up with a correct and proper um, contract that we use in the future that addresses these items. But I'm really concerned, as Cody says, that we are not going to have festivals even choose to come here if we make it so difficult for them to come. <coughs> Well, do you realize this is a future event? There's no contract in place, and it's a future event that happens in September. Right, I am. Uh, so that. this isn't something that's already on the books. I mean, it is on the books on Taloa's side of the 
of the house. And that's why we're uh, so But there's no contract. Uh, so it is a future event. But I do agree that it is what it is right now and that we should have a workshop addressing all fees and, and conditions moving forward. You know, it, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we can shut off downtown and, and just have a beer fest, okay, if that's what we want, if that's what we want to become. Uh, and, and, you know, just make sure the business is closed down if that's our intent. Well, uh, we, but we didn't have this discussion with Mumford & Son. There was no complaint that I was aware of. It was one of the smoothest festivals I've ever seen. We haven't had these. Um, you didn't have business complaints over that? I don't think we had <laughs> any at all. There's a lot. <laughs> I mean, we were we were not made aware of anything significant. No. Okay. Well, it's like I say, we we're starting to make material changes now in a contract uh, that is probably not too good of a thing. Exactly. Uh, and we should probably limit it, uh, let it be successful, and let it stand on its own. Uh, and just uh, reconvene at a workshop in the future to discuss how we want to move forward uh, on additional festivals and, and parties and concerts that we have. Okay, we have a motion uh, before us that's been uh, made and seconded to approve the lease agreement with the with the uh, inclusion of the suggested changes, mostly in language, and the exclusion of item number three, uh, first sentence, which spoke to uh, festival shall remit 10% of all, all ticket sales, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is there any other further discussion? That first line says $10,000. He said 2,500 several times. You mean yes, 2,500? Yes, we we're, we're, right. that's been amended to That's also what, you, what needs to be included in that. That's what you mean. Yes, that could. Yeah. Cody, are the rest of these out of line for what your discussions have been? Any other discussion? Yeah, I'll just go on record to make sure that everybody's aware that the insurance is at a super substandard uh, on the liability side of this deal. And I think Randall might be able to attest to that. It's the low end. The city's the city itself is protected because we've got Tort Claims Act that protects us, uh, but we want to protect the public also. Yeah. And, uh, it is, it's the low end, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, hearing no other discussion, please submit your vote. <coughs> All votes ran. See the vote. Unanimous to approve the uh, lease agreement with the provisions as identified in the motion. <laughs> Item number four, uh, possible dis uh, discussion, possible action of resolution to waive selected uh, sections of our uh, code of ordinance for the multiple sclerosis spike event. Also, at the same time as uh, the item of the festival we just talked about at Highland Park. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the city wishes to provide a temporary waiver for two articles within the Guthrie Code of uh, Ordinances concerning alcohol consumption inside a public park and also park closure time. Um, the time frame for this waiver is proposed to be Saturday, September 26th from 12 p.m. until 8 a.m. on Sa uh, September 27th. Uh, the articles proposed to be waived will now allow alcohol consumption inside of Highland Park, but not to include the pool, and will suspend the closure of the park at 12.30 p.m. on September 26th. Is that a.m.? Pardon? Closing at the right, 30 minutes after noon, is that what you're saying? They want to be at 4 30. It should be a.m. Yeah. They want to keep it open. The, uh, the event will actually run until 12.30 p.m. Uh, the next day. Uh, the uh, closing, the waiving of the closure of the park, uh, typically I think that that's 10 or 10.30, uh, and so this just allows them to camp overnight. Right. But the event itself actually runs, the, the period of the, the waiver will run until 12.30 the next afternoon. 
Now, does this allow for any setup and tear down time? Uh, they are, that would be something that we would typically do uh, in the operation side with uh, an exclusive use. Uh, the, the reason that this uh, policy is coming before council is because of the uh, waiving of the ordinances. So they would, allow, they would be allowed to use the um, park for exclusive use um, through, through a simple form that we have uh, that's found in my office that goes through each of the department heads, a lot of them who have worked with me on this project to uh, work with Bike MS. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion and a second to approve uh, this resolution. So I'll make moved. the motion. Second. <clears throat> Further discussion? Hearing none, submit your vote, please. I'll vote for it. Let's see the votes. Again, a unanimous uh, approval of the resolution uh, to waive selected uh, items of our ordinance. Item number five, discussion, possible action, resolution 2015-9, establishing a 911 emergency telephone fee for calendar year 2016. Staff comments? Uh, this resolution allows uh, the collection of uh, service fees on the landlines for 911. Uh, this recommendation is for 3%, which comes from the Association of Central Oklahoma Governments. Uh, in this calendar year, it's not fiscal year, this is a calendar year, the anticipated collection amount is $5,500. Our recommendation is that we approve this, and this is an annual resolution that comes before the council. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please submit your votes. I'll vote for it. Let's see the votes. A unanimous approval of, uh, of that resolution. Uh, item number six, discuss, discussion and possible action authorizing city staff to adopt the Oklahoma Municipal Retirement Fund Ordinance. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a, a need to appoint or reappoint two individuals to the Guthrie Edmond Regional Airport Board. Well, well, wait, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry. I would make the motion that we go ahead and prove that since we approved it in the uh, Guthrie so Public Works six. Authority. I'm sorry? Number I six. second. Number, number six. six. Number six. Yeah. Okay. We've already approved that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We approved it in the public work, so I'd have moved it. We go ahead and approve it here as well. <laughs> and I second. Yep. Any further discussion? That's why it looked familiar. Yeah. Because we, <laughs> we all had already seen it. Yeah. Um, okay. No, uh, not hearing any further discussion. Uh, please submit your vote. I'll vote for A unanimous approval of. Uh, uh, the adoption of that ordinance reflects the changes. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. This is for Randall. When we see something like that on a city uh, council thing, couldn't that be on the, um, if it was on the public works agenda, couldn't it be on the uh, consent. consent agenda for this one? It could. Okay. Just, uh, it, make, it makes it confusing when we do that. So I, I would think we could do that. Yeah. I was con confused. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. Okay, now item number seven, uh, discussion of possible action to appoint or reappoint City of Guthrie representatives uh, to the Guthrie Edmond Regional Airport Board. Uh, term limits uh, July 15 to June 18. Staff uh, comments, please. Uh, we have need to re uh, appoint or reappoint two individuals to the Guthrie Edmond Regional Airport Board. Justin, you have uh, any comments on this, please, sir? I think we have three candidates, do we not? There are three candidates and two positions to be filled. Uh, every three years, we fall upon uh, two individual uh, terms that we need to fill. Um, all, call, all candidates are qualified and recommended, and, and uh, we look forward to working with whoever you put forth. So. I would entertain a motion to um, nominate I would like one to. of I the individuals. Like to, I would like to do that, and I would like to nominate Trey Ayers and Carrie Owen to fill those two positions. I'll okay. second that. And that's exactly right. Okay. Further discussion? Call for the vote. <laughs> Hearing none, please uh, submit your vote. All votes are in. It's unanimous. Uh, 
from the council to uh, have Mr. Ayers and Mr. Owens uh, beyond the uh, Guthrie Edmond Regional Air Airport Board July 15, June 18. City Manager Report. Welcome. Well, thank you. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to serve as the interim city manager. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, today is uh, my one week anniversary and uh, I'm still here. You haven't run me off yet. <laughs> uh, and in that week, I've met with every department director with the exception of the library director. I've also reviewed, uh, toured their facilities. Uh, I'm very impressed with the facilities and especially impressed with the department director's professionalism. I think we have great staff and uh, I think they have professional staffs in their respective departments as well. Um, there will be a change coming to the city organization. Justin will be leaving us on July 6th. Um, good luck to you and your family. Uh, thank you for your years of service. We appreciate that, certainly. Um, Mayor, also the city hall and non-emergency offices will be closed Friday, July 3rd in ob observance of Independence Day. We won't be meeting before then, so I wanted to put that on there. We also have some events coming up. Uh, these are Lazy AE events on 619. They present uh, grand opening jackpot team roping, and then on the 21st, a Breeders International Show. The Pollard Theater from 619 until July 11th will present company. Uh, the extras that we have, uh, we wanted to mention the summer reading program at the Guthrie Public Library and also the Farmer's Market, which is, uh, runs from 8 a.m. till noon every Saturday at the northwest corner of Division and Harrison. So, thank you again. Pleasure to be here. Okay. Good. Good. Very, very good. Item number nine. Uh, comments from members of the City Council. Uh, Councilwoman Padgett. Thank you. Um, I just want to tell Justin how much I've enjoyed working with him uh, since 2013. I do wish you well. Hope all goes well with your wife's new venture, perhaps. And a special thank you to the city staff once and again. I've never met a group of people that work so well and get so much done on so little. Thank you. Councilman Taylor. Councilman, you beat me to everything I was going to say, so <laughs> I'll say the same thing. And Justin, we're going to miss you, but I, I mean, I, when it knocks, you got to go. So uh, thanks for all your work and hard, and really hard, <clears throat> and thanks to the staff too. Councilman Edwood. Again, Justin, thanks. Good luck. Hope everything works out for you in your new venture. And again, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking on the job and keeping us all straight. Thank you for listening to us, and I'm glad you're here keeping us going. So uh, it's really good. Um, I would like to, well, we can do this. We already have. We're going to workshop the uh, uh, festival things and uh, talk about that at a later date, which is great. And uh, again, Glad to be here and doing what we're doing. Good. Councilman Thomas. I can, you know, everything's been said. You know, thanks everybody for what they're doing and welcome Larry to, to Guthrie. I'm gonna call you on something. Is this person in the audience someone that you should have introduced? Uh, <laughs> yes, this is my bride of 45 years here, Claudia Pinnell. <laughs> uh, I'll try to keep you out of trouble. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> It takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Councilman Bothright. Yeah, and Justin, you've done a great job, and I know you'll go uh, soaring with the eagles as you move forward, obviously. And uh, congratulations to you and your family. Thanks, staff, uh, for everything that you do. And I've got to, as a new council member, I've got to engage a little bit in that. Uh, and so I've got to see, uh, or at least... Uh, get a feel for what you guys deal with and uh, appreciate you. Very good. Well, uh, congratulations on 45 years, you and Claudia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that, is, uh, that is significant. Uh, so uh, you should be very, very proud. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> you, should be very, you should be very proud of that. I know you are. I know you are. Like uh, and 
Justin, again, um, congratulations to you on your new opportunities. Um, and, uh, and thank you so much for what you've done for, uh, for the airport uh, here. Uh, done really, really good. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're adjourned. <laughs>